Ah, first video on the Ephilist channel. Yep. Um, yeah, the purpose of this channel, I think, will be to just post some videos on the general subject that, um, you know, that life is a failed experiment. Um, and it is just an experiment. It is just a, a thing being conducted that has no, you know, no plan, there's no godly intervention or any of that stuff. Um, and I do have other channels. Uh, you know, just say no to kids and uh, the Doom Bloom Goom Boom channel and mend them all that. But it's uh, it's not quite pointed the right direction. Uh, just say no to kids can sort of imply that I'm just against human life. And uh, no, it's all life is crap. Uh, the, the animal circumstance is probably far worse. Well, definitely is far worse than uh, the human circumstance. And uh, so that's definitely got to be the focus of the equation, the argument, the whatever. So anyway, so the premise here is going to be making videos that are just summations of uh, the history, the reality of life, and what we're doing here, how it got here, what it's doing, and uh, the fact that there really isn't anything you can make out of this thing because of its um, poor construction, that it is... It is broken from its very core, the very concept of creating need machines and uh, then giving them a world that's almost impossible to extract satisfaction of their need without um, imposing the uh, unsatisfied need on something else. Um, so yeah, it'd just be a bunch of videos when I feel inclined, uh, saying the same stuff different ways, because that's part of the game here. Just finding the right path, uh, you know, that'll get people to the end conclusion, which is uh, we've got to do something about this. We've got to stop this damn thing. Darn thing. I'm going to try not to swear. Uh, so, try not to be offensive overtly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good luck. So, anyway, getting on to the business, I guess. I think that's enough preliminary mumbo jumbo. All right, the game is basically this. Uh, first, let's just do a human culture thing, right? Human beings really haven't been around that long. And educated ones have only been around for, whatever, 10,000 years at best. And, uh, you know, really educated. Uh, seriously. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it was just about a, a bunch of uh, knowledge acquisition. We came from monkeys and gorillas and whatnot. And, uh, you know, raw animals didn't know how to control fire, do any of that stuff. We acquired that knowledge. We played the game. We picked and scratched at the world, and sort of figured out how it works. And in that process, human beings, um, you know, caught on to this God idea. You know, as an explanation, as they said, "Well, we look down at ants, so maybe there's a God looking down at us." And uh, they really didn't have any other way to explain everything was going on. They didn't have, uh, you know, chemistry and biology and physics. So they just had a bunch of, oh, thunder, spooky, scary, lightning, ooh, scary, hurricane, tornado. What the hell was that about? And so they drew this wrong conclusion that there was some sky daddy up there uh, playing games with them and, uh, you know, doing the carrot whip thing or whatever you want to say getting them to behave the right way and it would reward them and so we basically just became superstitious you know uh, you had a you lit a fire on a uh, full moon in September and two years in a row uh, the next day we had an earthquake just by coincidence yeah it got written in your little scary book of horrors and so now you're afraid of fire you know on uh, full moons or whatever it would be so yeah, we became superstitious because we were smart enough to become superstitious, but not smart enough to know we were just being superstitious and stupid. We were drawing wrong conclusions. Alright, so you have to start from scratch. You have to throw out all that, those old notions of reality, if you're going to be fair to the truth, and just start with the facts that we know, and stuff that's really, you know, hard science, the real deal. And the hard science says, you know, life has been here a long time, billions of years. 
and the game is basically this chemistry thing happens. And uh, you have that sun up there behind those clouds. And uh, it shoots a bunch of photons down here, uh, well, over here, uh, on here. And uh, they're moving, their energy. And that movement gets uh, trapped and, and energizes chemistry. And then the chemistry gets animated. It moves about in thermal seas at different temperature. And stuff bangs into each other. And the chemistry starts getting more and more complicated. It keeps banging around and banging into each other. And eventually, on planet Earth, quite apparently, uh, the formation of a DNA molecule took place. And uh, the mechanism for its reproduction uh, was also took place. And that peanut butter got on that chocolate. And bingo, he had a reproducing cell. So every bit of life on this planet right now, every bit of it, every, every bit of it, is a direct descendant from one single reproducing cell. And, uh, you know, about four billion years ago. So a few hundred million years ago, uh, you know, life did this evolving thing because of a DNA molecule. So what's really happening is the molecule is evolving. Uh, the molecule is changing, and as the blueprint changes, the product changes, the building changes. And uh, the changes that uh, give you a, a, a more functional consumption or more functional reproduction in the world uh, to suit an environment, give you a niche, have you crawl through some part of this stuff better than everybody else, and you'll be more likely to survive and carry your blueprint to another generation. And that's the game being played here in its broadest uh, strokes. It's just a competition between molecules. Uh, they don't really care about what the end result looks like. They don't care about what you feel, what you think, what you look like. It's just the molecule. That's all that matters. That molecule getting from the present into the future. That's a dirty machine. I don't know what the hell it's doing. Sorry about the noise. Um, so anyway, so yeah, we have this evolution thing happening. At one point, somewhere along the line, it became uh, useful to have a central nervous system, um, a processor to do this whole more animated, more complex reflexes uh, to, to exploit the environment. But the key thing was all this life form is the, the sun eaters they're really doing all the work here and the since they're capturing all this you know movement from the sun this energy they're storing it having it move around inside of them and uh, if you're an organism you can grab that stuff a big chunk of it and steal that movement that power that energy and that's what all these DNA molecules are competing over is stealing that stuff uh, so they can use their weapons to beat the other DNA molecule forms uh, and succeed. And that's the game. So somewhere along the line, like I said, we got into this whole brainy thing, brain up in here, and uh, sentience as a motivator. Uh, so we would be, uh, you would be bestowed with a feeling that your brain would have to deal with this consciousness thing. So you really have two brains. One is feeling the world. And the other is reacting to the feelings and saying, how do, I, how do I manage these feelings? How do I get rid of the bad feelings? How do I maximize the good feelings? So that's what your thinking brain is doing, while your feeling brain is creating essentially the problem for your thinking brain to solve. So we kind of have the, the futility is almost in the diagram of our brain itself. Because here we have one brain contriving work, making work for the other brain by creating this um, feeling problem. Uh, you know, make a worry, <laughs> make a fear, uh, make an anxiety, make a, a pain, make a problem so then the thinky brain has to occupy itself uh, resolving a solution. And uh, that's sort of the game. That's all there is here. That's all we're doing. And we're doing it from this personal subjective perspective and that yeah I do the feeling here 
my consciousness, my brain, is one individual consciousness, and it's pretty, you know, interested in uh, getting rid of those bad feelings and feeling comfortable. And uh, so it can lose sight of the fact that all the other feeling machines out there are in the same dilemma. And uh, their feelings are just as real and just as meaningful as mine. And uh, so now the intelligence has a problem because now it's got to understand that, oh yeah, I don't have to worry just about me and what I feel by logic. I, I, you know, I've got to consider my impact on these other feeling things. And I somehow have to do this math correctly so in the end I prevent or eliminate more bad feelings and I create or maximize as much comfort as possible as the sensation being felt by these other beasties. Uh, but again, we're hitting the brick wall of the stupid design. Uh, basically, it's made out of consumption, reproduction, cannibalism. Because we're on an island, so we do have to essentially cannibalize each other. We have to eat our ancestors, no doubt about it, uh, uh, or a, a relative. Maybe a very distant one, but nonetheless, it's a relative. And uh, addiction is the key one. Because we keep moving and keep grabbing because of these reoccurring hungers. This need to feed the machine. And uh, the machine that preserves the DNA blueprint. And has the hope that in preserving it, there will be opportunity to uh, create a copy that will get into the future. And so the game can be played over and over and over forever, theoretically. But to accomplish nothing but to create weapons suitable to environments. That's all we're doing here. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, so there's different ways you go here to finish up. But look, the bottom line is we're just need machines. We generate the potential for harm in the universe. The universe without living, well, more importantly, without feeling life, there's nothing, there's nothing to harm. There's no way anything destructive can happen in the universe without harmables. So if we, the feeling things don't exist, there's no downside risk. You maintain um, a, a guaranteed not losing. And not losing is kind of important. Not losing is a good thing. I know winning is, you know, perceived as the way to go, but not losing is also good. And the risk of trying to win is the fact that you really can't. Because you have to kind of think of it like a lottery. And then all the other tickets are, are real value possessed by somebody else that you're going to basically be consuming or eating. So you really can't win without somebody else losing. Uh, then there's going to be more losers than winners. It happens in every war, it happens in every contest, uh, there's always more losers than winners. And, uh, you know, an open contest, unlimited players, um, you will create more losers than winners. And that's the, 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 the paradox, the impossibility of our circumstance. You just can't play the life game without causing more harm than you're ever going to be able to compensate for with your moments of glory. It just isn't going to happen. There's no math to make this work. It's just going to fail. And so we just have to give up on creating the harmables, creating the need machines, because they don't need to exist. That's the key thing to understand. Because you feel the value doesn't mean the value is real. Because you love Mozart 